Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on blood glucose homeostasis. Uh, in this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, the synthesis and storage of in uh, sorry, not the synthesis and storage, the synthesis and secretion of insulin. We will cover the storage of insulin, but more importantly, we're going to cover the secretion of insulin. So the synthesis and secretion of insulin. Okay, so the structure for this video then will start off by uh, discussing the structure of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, which are uh, the endocrine cells within the pancreas. Uh, and then what we'll do is discuss the synthesis of insulin and then uh, the secretion of insulin in response to a rise in blood glucose level. So we'll look at the pathway by which a rise in blood glucose level uh, causes release of insulin from the uh, beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. Okay. Uh, We'll also see uh, examples of certain drugs which can be used to promote the release of insulin from the beta cells. Okay, so we'll start off with the uh, islets of Langerhans then. So basically, the islets of Langerhans are these collections of cells uh, within the pancreas. And basically, islets means islands, basically. And effectively, these islets of Langerhans, they are little islands of cells in amongst the huge number of cells which are involved in the exocrine uh, function of the pancreas, okay? Uh, so that's where their name comes from, and Langerhans is just the uh, person who first discovered them. Right, so, uh, there are many different types of cells within the islets of Langerhans. There are three main types of endocrine cells, and there is one final type which I'll mention as well. So, if I draw a little picture here, so... It's a little cluster of cells, basically. So this is our islet of Langerhans, and in it you'll have loads and loads of cells. And all of these cells are secreting uh, molecules into um, the bloodstream. Okay, so there are four main endocrine types of cell. Actually, there's three main types of endocrine cell, and there's one final one which I'll mention, so four overall. Um, and these are the alpha cells, the beta cells, the delta cells and the PP cells. Okay, so we'll start off with the alpha cells, and then I'll just finish this picture now because we're almost there. Okay, so some of these cells will be alpha cells within the islets of Langerhans. So let's just colour in a few to represent our alpha cells. Okay, so we'll have the alpha cells in turquoise. So all of these are going to represent alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans. Okay, and these alpha cells uh, release the hormone glucagon, which is involved in uh, bringing blood glucose up. So if blood glucose is too low, uh, the alpha cells will detect that and they'll release glucagon. Okay, so they release a hormone known as glucagon, which is involved in bringing blood glucose back up. Okay, and we'll discuss that later on in this playlist. Right, then there are the beta cells, okay, so we'll colour these in a different colour, and I'll just underline alpha cells, since they're being represented by turquoise, I'll just underline the word in turquoise. We'll represent beta cells in orange, okay, now beta cells secrete a number of different hormones, two of which we will see uh, in this video, okay, but the main one they uh, secrete is insulin. Okay, but as we'll see, another byproduct of the production of insulin is a hormone known as C peptide. So they also secrete this, and they also secrete another um, hormone known as amylin. Okay, so three hormones that I'd like you to know about here. The main one, of course, is insulin, but then a byproduct in the production of insulin that we'll see in this video is something known as C peptide and there should be a little dash between C and peptide, like so. Okay, and then there's another hormone known as amylin. Okay, amylin. And amylin is short for islet amyloid polypeptide. So the full name for amylin is islet uh, amyloid polypeptide. Okay, and we're not going to discuss this in this video, but we may discuss this in future videos. Okay, right. Uh, next up, we have the delta cells. Okay, so I'll colour in the delta cells in purple. 
So let's have this as a delta cell, this as a delta cell, this as a delta cell. We'll have this as a delta cell, this as a delta cell, this as a delta cell, this one, this one. And there we go, that will leave us enough for the final type. Okay, so these in purple are delta cells, and these secrete something known as somatostatin, which does have a role in regulating the release of insulin and glucagon, as well as um, its role in um, regulating the release of growth factor as well. Okay, so somatostatin is released by delta cells, and then finally, there is a final type of cell known as PP cells. Okay, and uh, PP uh, is short for the product which these cells release, which is called pancreatic polypeptide. So we'll have these in blue here, so a few little PP cells around the place. Okay, in blue. And these secrete a product known as pancreatic polypeptide and at present we do not know what the function of pancreatic polypeptide is uh, but it is secreted into the blood. Okay, so at present uh, this is uh, an ongoing area of research. Right, okay, so uh, let's now talk about insulin synthesis. So we're now going to abandon these other three types of cells within the islets of Langerhans and focus in specifically on these beta cells which are producing insulin and we'll also look at C-peptide in this video. Okay, so let's start off with the structure then of insulin. Okay, so insulin is actually two small fragments joined together basically. It's two little polypeptide fragments joined together. So you have one fragment which is slightly bigger than the other and this bigger fragment is known as the B chain. Okay, so this is the B chain of insulin and I'll colour in the B chain in green here. So this is the B chain of insulin and then you have another chain of insulin which is slightly shorter than the B chain and this is the A chain. Okay, and the a chain and the B chain are joined together by two disulfide bridges, basically. So, um, both the B chain and the A chain both have uh, cysteine residues within them, and the cysteine residues will form disulfide bridges. So you'll have a disulfide bridge here, which is between two thiol groups of two cysteine residues, and you'll have a disulfide bridge here. So let me just um, explain in a little bit more detail what a disulfide bridge is. So, basically, they involve uh, the amino acid cysteine, okay? So let me show you the structure of cysteine amino acid as though it's within the polypeptide. Okay, so we'll start off with a cysteine residue here, okay? So there's one on the B chain here. Okay, so this is a cysteine residue within the B chain. Here's the alpha carbon with the carboxylic acid group that will be involved in a peptide link. So when people talk about amino acid residues, what they mean is they're drawing the amino acid structure as though it's in a polypeptide. They're not drawing the free amino acid, they're drawing it as though it's within a polypeptide. So that's what's meant by an amino acid residue. And the R group of a cysteine amino acid residue is a methylene group then with a thiol group coming off it. Now, a thiol group is a sulfur atom then with a hydrogen put on it. Uh, but I'm going to be slightly fortuitous and not draw the hydrogen coming off this because I want to draw this in a disulfide bond, basically, with a um, cysteine residue on the A chain. So this is our B chain cysteine residue. And to illustrate that, I'll just colour in these bonds in green. Okay, so this is the B chain cysteine residue, and now what we'll also have is an A chain cysteine residue. So uh, let me put the A chain here, and let me just work out. Um, right, hmm, and this is slightly difficult because I've drawn it kind of the wrong way because this is the amino terminus of this A chain. Uh, sorry, this B chain up here, and this is the carboxylic acid terminus down here. Okay, and the carboxylic acid terminus of the A chain will also be down here, and the amino terminus will be down here. So what I need to do is have the amino termini pointing the same way. So the amino terminus needs to be up here, basically. Okay, right. Uh, so I've kind of drawn it back to front. It's not 
just this picture rotated it's this picture kind of rotated that way instead and then turned over 180 degrees so it's a complicated picture but don't worry about it okay so this was just meant to show the principle of a disulfide bond okay so here's the amino group here's the alpha carbon uh, with a hydrogen coming off it and here's the carboxylic acid group again uh, linked to the next amino acid along and the R group again is going to be a methylene group with a thiol group coming off it which would be a sulfur atom attached to a hydrogen atom but what's going to happen is they're both going to give up their hydrogen atoms and instead bind to one another and this is what is meant by a disulfide bridge this bond here between the two sulfur atoms this is what's called a disulfide bridge or a disulfide bond Okay, and these are very strong bonds. They're one of the most strong uh, tertiary interactions that you can get between amino acids. And we've got two of them. We've got one here and one here, basically. And those are holding the B chain to the A chain. Okay, right, so that's the disulfide bridge. Uh, right, so let's now talk about how we're actually going to uh, produce uh, insulin, basically, because you don't make two separate proteins and then stick them together. Instead, what you do is you make one protein and both the B chain and the A chain come from that single protein. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.